Hey, this is Carol from Bristol, Virginia again. And I don't know what happened, but my video went down. So I'm going to try to kind of start all over again because I wanted to talk to you all a little bit today about change. I have it written back here on my whiteboard, however which way I go. A change. It's a choice. It's something you choose you want to do. You want to change things for the better. And that's basically all change is, is wanting to change and make things happen for the better. And excuse my mess, I've been outside, inside, here, there, running around. It's crazy and it's really hot out. But I've also been listening to Tony Robbins a lot lately. And I have just, my head is just swamped with information. The nuggets that he hits home on. It's like, I feel like he's talking about me. And this is how I want you all to feel. We all have greatness inside us. We all have something we can give back. I grew up with a visionary. My father was a multimillionaire. He was a visionary big time. And he kind of helped form me and helped me to see things in a different light. So many different ways to look at things. And it just was an amazing experience for me, you know, and it was something that was fortunate for me to have that not necessarily everyone gets to have that type of experience, you know, right there from the home. You know, and that's why we have all these great entrepreneurs. They're all the same thing. And they're all tapping into the same message, guys. I mean, I guess I can give you an example for myself all through my life many jobs and different circumstances I've been through. Nothing has really been satisfying enough. Sure, I did really well with each thing that I did, you know, rose to the top of everything that I did, consumed and added on and, you know, was glorified. But still, there was something missing. There's always been something missing. And I think it's because I grew up in a really bad situation that has always been kind of my backbone in life that I don't want anyone else to go through misery. It's like I want to help, you know, to the point where, you know, there was a time when I was a young kid thinking, I want to be a nun so I can go out and preach and help people, let them know there's help. But, but that wasn't quite right either for me at the time. So not that I'm a nun now, I never have been, but, you know, I have found a community, a, a college that really believes as I do, and, and it's wonderful, and it really helps me a lot, a lot, and I am thriving there. But th my point is, is, you know, maybe you don't think that you're capable of these sort of things, and I want to tell you that you are. We all are capable of giving back, you know, and that's kind of the bottom line. Um, and it's not necessarily about motivation, okay? I mean, sure, I'm sure we all have something that we want to obtain through everything that we do, you know, and I have my goals and whatnot also. But this is more about something that's within inside you. You know, you may have this grand vision of something particular you want to change, you know, and you want to... Let everybody know that, you know, this can happen. You can do this. Or um, you may have just reached, gotten to the point where you're at a threshold that you've learned all you can about marketing and you're ready for that next step. And you need to step out and you need to start talking to people. Let them know there is a way out. You just have to look inside. And that little secret, that little thing that, is bothering in your gut, the thing that makes you want to give back something. You just need to tap into that. Find out what all those little resources are that you have that other people want to hear about. And this is all you really need to concentrate on in the long run. What is it that you feel that you can and you want to give back? I want to make people's lives better, happier, a little more freedom in their life to enjoy life. You know, we weren't really meant to work nine to five every day of our lives until we retire and then we're old and decrepit and you have to do all these things to try to stay healthy and not be so old and decrepit anymore. We're, we should be enjoying these things right from the get-go, you know, and being who we are and helping people the way we want to. 
you know, and when you're that way, the rewards come. It just comes within itself naturally. When you be who you are and you start offering what you have inside to give others. Um, so I just, I just wanted to try and explain that a little bit. I don't necessarily think that everyone will get that, but I do just want to say, you know, there's a way. My mom always told me when I was growing up, where there's a will, there's a way. And she really pounded that into us because her name was Wilma and everyone called her Will. <laughs> and no matter what sort of things that I may even get, had gotten stuck on, you know, thinking, I'm just going to give up. I can't figure this out. She wouldn't let that go. She would tell me, no, you know, you want to do this particular thing? Well, I'm here to tell you, standing right here in the flesh and blood before you, where there's a will, and she boy to herself, there is a way. <laughs> so, you know, and of course, I always had my dad more or less doing the same thing, only in a visionary source. So I would urge you all to sit down, start bulletproofing your life. What sort of things have you been through? And particularly those hard times and things that, you know, you really don't feel like you'd want to talk to anybody about. Because, guys, those are your golden nuggets. Those are the very things that people are looking up to other people and listening for people to say things that relate to them. And there are so many issues and problems that we all go go through i mean there's a mountain full of them and there are mountains and mountains and alps full of people of all walks of life and so to think that you would have nothing to offer to anyone think twice about that because there is in your heart and your gut and your experiences from life in your hard times, especially those hard times, is what people want to hear about. Because then they see you glorifying in that and exceeding so many expectations because you're getting to where you want to be. You're out there and you're talking about things that can help people. You want to help people change their lives, change their identity, be different than the humdrum from the status quo, rise above, help them to understand this. Because we all can be there. We all have this inside us. We just need to be able to look inside and take it out. And you can do that. You can look within your own heart. See what it is that, number one, what is it that you want in life? Number two, what do you have to do to get there? Number three, do you understand your life? Have you obtained the wisdom from all those hard things that you've come up against? And what lessons have you learned from them? You put all these things together into your own personal story, per se. And you start bringing these things to people. And they will relate. I'll take one hard, hard thing that I'm going to say that I haven't. But my two first little girls were kidnapped from me. And for 24, no, it was actually more like 36 hours. I was practically catatonic. It was during the days way, way, way back in the, I don't know, mid, late 70s, where, um, oh dear, I can't remember his name. But anyway, he had a child who disappeared and wound up, it was, he was decapitated. And there's this big thing that was going on all over the place. Parents frantic about their kids. And, there were kids that were continued to be kidnapped and decapitated. And I'll tell you what, that just, it was the worst thing that I ever could have experienced in my entire life. But fortunately, I was living in Illinois. My ex was in California. I had talked to him that morning. He wanted to know when I was sending the kids back, blah, blah, blah. So I keep, kept an eye on him because I told the attorney, he's either going to kidnap my kids or put a bullet through my head. 
Sometimes I thought it, I would have been better for the hell I've gone through with it. But thank goodness he didn't. And they found him at the airport with my kids. And I'll tell you what, I was so relieved. But people who have this happen to them, I can relate to their fear, their depression, anxiety over things like this. And you can get over it. You know, sure, it takes time, but it's a story they can then tell later on, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Mine, thank God, turned out okay. I mean, it wasn't, but they weren't dead somewhere. And that pain, going through something like that, made me stronger, gave me more insight. Gave me more understanding to people who've gone through similar things that I can relate to. You know, when you've got something you can relate to people with, they just swarm to you. When my two of my husbands had died, the first one that died, I never would go into a graveyard. But when he died, I had to. And I'll tell you what, that took a lot. I mean, I just, you know, I'd almost hold my breath when I'd go by when I was so afraid of them. What I did, too, is I wound up working there for almost two years after that. And by the end of that two, second year, you know, I was standing with someone's funeral, as us as counselors had to do. And I went outside. And it was a beautiful day and nice breeze and the birds were singing. And someone was inside, you know, going through their procession with their funeral. And I suddenly was okay. I suddenly was able to accept and move on and realize that time was the only thing I had. But it also gave me the wisdom to understand that he was in a better place and everything is really okay. But those two years I worked there, people going through grief, losing a loved one, I was able to relate to them and we'd all sit and cry together. So my whole point is, even the worst situations that you can go through, you can relate them to people. I mean, I got a list too long to put on here of things that I've gone through. And as bad as that is, it's actually helped me to understand a whole lot about people, you know, and what they their needs are and how to help them. And I have discovered that we all have that ability. We can all get out there. We can all talk to people. We can all become great. All we have to do is relate to each other. Talk about what's in here. What is your, what is your motivation to want to help people? Mine basically is I don't want to see people hurting anymore. I wish everyone could be happy. And I'll tell you what, before I die, I'm going to make as many happy people out there as I possibly can because I'm driven to because of all the hell that I've gone through and issues and hard knocks yeah you talk about hard knock university you know I 4.0 on that one or more <laughs> but you know my point is we all have this within us you have it too so if you need help in trying to get yourself to that threshold where you're ready to just spill to the world and help others too, or you don't know how to get there and you want to know how to get there, contact me. You know, I'm branded, my name's out there. Click on my profile. You know, I'm on facebook.com slash Carol Earl. You can find me anywhere and I'd be happy to help you all. But just remember, all you need to do is take that first step in wanting to change because change is good as i said up here change it's a choice for a better beginning and a better you so for now i'm going to leave you with god bless i hope you have a wonderful day and i'm sure i'll be talking to you again real soon so bye for now and I'll look forward to hearing from you. Bye.